G'day. Those of you who've been watching for a while, particularly when I do shoot metal, will have seen this thing. Uh, this is, or at least I think it is, a Roper and Whitney uh, number 5 Junior hand punch. I say I think because there's a story in there. However, uh, while trying to get some more punches for this, uh, I, I chanced upon seeing th that there's a larger version of this, uh, which they call the XX. And uh, so today I'm going to be trying to make up some punches because one of the problems with the, um, the Roper and Whitney kit is that their punches are imperial and uh, Australia being a metric country, country, that's not always convenient. And so I want to get some metric punches. Uh, they could make them, but they'd be a special order. They'd cost a zillion dollars and so on. So today, for its big brother, so I'm trying to make a basic metric punch. There'll be other punches I want to make, but this is just sort of a, a trial piece. Starting with the number five here. And the XX is a similar thing, but it's, a, it's a, just a bigger scale. So there's a, there's a whole range of punches you can get. Uh, the ones that come in the set are Imperial. And basically you've got this bit that screws in the bottom, and then this part uh, sits in the top there. And that's the action there. Uh, they work quite nicely. And there's a little stop there too. Now, the reason in the introduction that I said that this might be Roper and Whitney is that I tried buying a, a small punch for this uh, from Roper and Whitney, but it didn't fit. Now, when I mentioned measured all the um, the punch barrels there or the punch diameters, they are all 0.279 of a of an inch, except for the one that wouldn't fit, which was 0.28. However, when I went back to um, Roper and Whitney, the, the suggestion was made, well, it's probably not a, a genuine punch because there were some counterfeits made. Um, apparently, you can tell by the yellow handles. And so there wasn't really much help there to try and get a punch that fitted. I eventually had to, to grind it down. But um, yes, uh, an inquiry several weeks ago now about is this a genuine punch or not? Um, Mm, no answer. One of the punches that can be used in this punch is a, well, what would you call it, a countersink punch. Basically it'll punch the uh, the hole through your, your piece of sheet, uh, but then because of the shape of the punch and the shape of the, of the die, it will actually put a put a form to that. Uh, so if you, you've got some small countersink screws to set. And uh, that's quite interesting because that's one of the things that I'd like to do with the XX as well. This is the XX hand punch. As you can see, considerably bigger. Um, I discovered when I moved the guide here that they, they sort of assemble these, then they paint them, which is a bit, uh, bit odd. But uh, it is what it is. The XX punch is similar sort of arrangement uh, in that there's a, a, a die piece and a, and a punch. The uh, die piece screws into the body here and the punch screws into the top. The interesting thing with this is that it's got a couple of screws there. Now that screw retains that punch, but what can also mean is it means you can make up square or you can buy square punches and things like that. Once again, special order um, that can fit in here and so you can actually punch square holes and, and that's something I'd like to be able to do soon uh, too. What I want to do is make up uh, a punch and a die. Uh, I won't be hardening them at the moment because I've got a whole bunch of these I want to make and I'll, I just wanted to see whether the, it's even practical for me to do. Uh, but in a, in a six millimeter size, so I can, I can set uh, four millimeter uh, rivet nuts. This thing is, is uh, considerably heavier than the, the number five. Uh, and so although it wouldn't be too bad for uh, the odd hold or two, I think you'd get pretty tired of it uh, if you were using it a lot. Fortunately, there is a base that's available for this. Uh, quite a simple design. I was tempted to make one, but then I thought the amount of material I'd have to machine off to, uh, to get to this shape would be quite large, and I, I didn't want to make a pattern up. But that slides in a, uh, a hole in the back there. And then these two set screws come in to lock the, uh, the, the punch in place. Uh, this has to be fastened down to a, a bench or something like that. 
there but I can do that with a, a, a G clamp but for the, uh, temporarily and I'll, I'll come up with something a little bit more permanent but that just means you can do the punchy thing with it uh, sitting on a, on a bench uh, and not be hefting the weight around. One of the, the critical things with uh, punch and die type punches is the clearance between the die and the, the punch. Uh, the closer you can get that the better off the better finish you get but then you've got to be careful that you not having a situation where a little bit of misalignment means you you crunch your punch or that uh, the material just doesn't want to want to do it uh, and there are various tables out there for um, loads and and uh, you know tonnages and all that sort of thing these things give about 1.2 tons I think I read so uh, not an enormous amount uh, the, the maximum size here is uh, 17 30 seconds which is around about 13 and a half millimeters uh, but I, I, I doubt you'd get that through a, a decent thickness of steel that's a 7 30 second and that's uh, 0.219 thou and on the size of the punch it helpfully says 0.219 so that's all good when I measure this though with a pin gauge and that one only just goes in all right. Um, that pin gauge is 0.226. So there's seven thou clearance between the punch and the die. So that's what I'm going to be aiming for. I'm going to start off making the die because I can put a hole in that and then um, do my punch to suit. It's, a, it's another uh, step in the process, but I'll probably end up having to make a grinding fixture so I can harden these things and then bring this down to, to exact size. But for the moment, I'm just going to be making some out of a bit of tool steel, and uh, that'll just give me an idea as to whether I can achieve the geometry and whether it's even feasible to, to do these things. I've just prepped my uh, bit of tool steel for cutting the, the thread, so uh, take took that down to the... To the uh, uh, thread OD and then went down here to the the diameters of the, of the lands here and here now there are two ways you can set this up to do uh, one is as I've done here but the other one you could do it that way the benefit of that is that it saves you having to do a setup to um, put that uh, clearance hole in there the way these punches work is that you've got a uh, you've got the hole there which you probably can't see but shortly after the hole, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch or something like that, three millimetres, it then widens out. So any slug that goes in there gets a chance to be pushed, pushed through and doesn't have any, any um, friction. The downside of that is that that hole is not necessarily going to be accurately located. So what I've decided to do here is I'm going to uh, drill and hopefully about, if I can find a ream the right size, ream that uh, hole to size and then I'll have to come back and, and make up a, uh, a clamp block or something like that to, to put the clearance hole in. That won't matter too much if it's slightly out of position. Uh, the important thing is that it's there so that the, the, the slug can, can get through. I've got my uh, die all, all um, threaded here. Uh, I checked that with a thread mic and it's the, the, the same as the, the thread on here. The general dimensions are the same. There's a slight crown on here, but I don't know whether I'll bother with that just for the moment. Uh, I'm more interested in, in whether I can get this thing to, uh, to work. As I said earlier, the clearance between the punch and the die is something like uh, six thou. Now, I haven't got a, uh, a 6.15 uh, reamer, but I have got a 6.15 drill, which is this one. It's a C, it's a C um, drill from the letter series. So I'm going to very slowly and carefully just run that in there with a bit of, bit of um, stuff on there. As I said, it won't matter too much because I'm going to be making my punch to suit, but I'd like to get this uh, six or maybe a smidge over just so I can, I can 
uh, punch those those six millimeter minus nothing plus something or other uh, typically 0.1 or so holes so I've run my C size drill in there uh, six millimeters plus six thou should come out to 242 there's a 242 pin beautiful I love that little pop sound do it again Oh, it's leaking out. There we go. Hmm. Anyway, so that's all, all good. I can now part that off, come in from the, 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 the back there and put in the, the, uh, the relief hole and that should be uh, good to go. Here's the six millimeter end of my punch. I still need to put a little um, uh, dimple on the end there uh, like that one has, but it's, it's there if I measure that If I measure that I get a little bit under 0 0.236 uh, and 236 is six millimeters so uh, it's it's close enough for that it'll, it'll be a smidge under six millimeters which is a pity but uh, I suspect that uh, by the time it gets around to doing something it'll it'll be you know good enough as is um, comparing it to my my die here it fits so that's all good I use my, uh, my, my round button tool here because dies prefer, uh, well, tool steel prefers uh, radii rather than sharp corners. Sharp corners are, are, are prone to cracking, so uh, that's why I use this particular tool. This diameter here for this size punch is, is just clearance. Uh, when, when you get up to the bigger punches, it's, it, it's, a, it's a hard uh, fixed diameter, but what I now need to do is put my little dimple on the end there and then using my parting tool uh, run that down to get the the, 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 uh, the diameters here. Now this is actually crucial because this is what holds everything in alignment with, with this particular style of, of punch. This is what holds it in alignment with the die. So that needs to be basically spot on. Uh, that looks like it's been ground. Uh, I haven't got a, a grinding device yet to, uh, to do that sort of thing. So I'm going to just have to be very careful with my uh, machining uh, and you know, give, it a, give it a bit of polish, see if I can creep up on that dimension. So how does this all fit up? Well, you, you start, for this, for this particular one, you start with the punch and you slide that into there and then you use the, uh, the screwdriver and lock that in and then you take the, the die and you screw that in. Um, I must confess I have screwed this in before because I usually find that um, when I when I'm cutting a thread on the lathe, uh, it's 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 a little bit burry, a little bit rough, and so it's nice to have a nut to run it down. So I did try it in here just to, to smooth that off. But you can see that there's that punching action. Everything lines up quite nicely. Of course, the big question is, how does it work? So the uh, uh, punch is fitted into the the holder. Uh, it just happens to be sit nicely on a on a t-slot so that's all good that action there is is quite important that's called stripping and that uh, helps you remove that from the punch so as you can see i've got a nice clean hole uh, there's a little bit of a burr on the back there six millimeters is 0.236 thou it's actually two tenths of a thou over and if I take the, the pin, I can just get it through there. So I've got basically a six mil punch. Now, I'll, uh, I, won't, I won't use this unless I really have to. Uh, I'll um, uh, send this off for uh, heat treatment with a whole bunch of other things, uh, and that'll be in a little while time. But uh, uh, yeah, I've, I've got a six mil punch, and now I can start working on uh, a few things to make other punches. I, I want to, I'd like to make some rectangular punches. I'd like to make some uh, more uh, metric 
punches. Uh, but I probably need a better way of, of grinding that um, locating surface there. So I need to I need to work on that. But it's a result. Thanks for watching. See you for the next one.